Education School Geography Department. We're a well-established geography department with continuing outstanding success at A-level. If you do geography here, we will be taught by four specialist teachers who have more than 60 years teaching experience between them. And many of our students go on to study geography at university, including Russell Group 1s and Oxford and Cambridge. The geography department is made up of four teachers who all teach A-level. That's Miss Hendry, who is the head of department, Miss Blair, who is Key Stage 5 coordinator, Dr Lear and Mr Morton. We study the LXL specification at A-level. That's a picture of what it looks like and you can go online and find that out for yourselves and actually look at what, you know, what that entails if you want to, but we will go through that with you when we start the course. I'm going to go through now the areas that we study in Year 12 and Year 13. They're divided up into topics and the first one that we do in Year 12 is to look at tectonic processes and hazards, something that you will have looked at at GCSE, so it will be a continuation of that. So you've got a photograph there of a very nice volcanic eruption. And what we're going to do now is we're going to watch a clip about the Japanese Tohoku earthquake and tsunami. And whilst we're watching the clip, I'd like you to consider three questions. Why is Japan prone to earthquakes? What impacts did, these earth, did this earthquake and tsunami have on Japan? And I'd like you to think a little bit about the clip, which was actually produced by an insurance company. Is this clip biased? coastal landscape and change. Again, something which you might have looked at at GCSE. Um, and I'm going to show you just one more clip um, during the presentation this morning, or this uh, today, which is um, about coastal landscape and change. So again, as with the other one, 
I'd like you to think about three things. Would you like to live on the coastline? And if you did, how would you feel if your land and livelihood were being lost to the sea? And do you think it's fair that farmland along the coast is not protected like homes are? It's quite terrifying looking down to the side of you when you're on the edge. The cliffs are 40 feet, something like that high, and then you're another six to eight feet higher on top of the machinery as well. So when you're using as much of the land as you possibly can at the coast, you've just got to get as close as you, as you can with the machinery. If, I had a choice, I wouldn't do it. But it's just one of those things that you've got to do and get used to. When I was a teenager on the farm, there was two old war buildings there, a lookout post and a radio building too. And those are both buried in the beach now, but we used to farm round the other side of them at one point. And, you know, they, they've just gone now. Farmland, although it's important, is, is one of those things that's sacrificial. Do you protect people's houses or do you protect farmland? Obviously everybody's going to protect the houses, aren't they? In Year 12 we also study globalisation. And final topic in Year 12 is regenerating places. And a very familiar photograph there of the um, Olympic Stadium, now the home of West Ham Football Club. Um, again, something that quite a few of you, I think, will have looked at at GCSE. So we look at that as part of our Regenerating Places course. We also uh, study regenerating rural areas as well as urban areas. In Year 13, for further areas of study, the water cycle and water security is a very important topic in Year 13. And you can see there a photograph of the charity Water Aid. So that's one of our topics. We then look at a topic which is very, very important, and that is the carbon cycle and energy security. So we look at different forms of energy, such as renewables, where we've got some wind turbines, and non-renewables, uh, a coal-fired power station. And then we link that in to carbon dioxide emissions and global warming and climate change. Two further topics are superpowers. We've got two images there of superpowers. And then finally, finish off the course by an optional topic which is called migration, identity and sovereignty. I know it's very early days, but how are you going to be assessed in geography? Well, all the exams are in year 13 and there are three examination papers. Paper one is on the physical geography topics. That's the coasts, tectonic hazards and processes and carbon and energy security and water and water security. And then paper two is on the human topics. That's the remaining topics, globalization, superpowers, migration identity and sovereignty and regenerating places. The third paper is called a synoptic paper, so it draws together elements of all of the things that you have done in your geography course. And then finally, you have an assessment which is called the NEA, the Non-Examination -examin Assessment. We like to call it the coursework. And this is where you really get to work and study the, an area of geography that you find interesting. Field work is an extremely important part of geography and we go to South Wales to a study centre called Margam to actually gather information for our NEA and then there are other one day visits throughout the course. We're very fortunate as a department as well to be able to run a field trip every couple of years to Iceland and we've done this over a number of years, the land of fire and ice. And there you've got a map of Iceland. What I'm going to do now is show you some photographs that 
we have taken or students have taken whilst we've been on our field trip. That was our last trip which was in 2019 and that was on one of the hoodies that uh, we, we have when we go on the trip so we will get our own individual hoodies for the trip. So this was amazing, it was on our first night um, when we were go actually going to the place where we were staying and we were really fortunate to see the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights. And this was taken by one of our year 11 students, a very talented student who actually took this photograph. We've been several times and we've never seen the Northern Lights before. So it was just an amazing experience. What a way to be welcomed to Iceland. We also, as a highlight of our geography trip to Iceland, go walking on a glacier. So we get ourselves fully equipped and go up onto one of the glaciers in Iceland. Last time we went to Iceland in 2019, one of the big um, waterfalls, Gullfoss, was actually frozen and that's a photograph of that taken again by one of our students. This is a photograph of the main cathedral church in Reykjavik, which is a really imposing um, building in the landscape. As mentioned before, we are a very successful geography department. And I've just put on this slide some of the successes that we've had in the past. So between 2007 and 2019, we've had over 250 geography A-level students. And as of these, 92 students have actually gained an A-star or A. We've had 66 students go on to read geography at university and we've had six Oxford and Cambridge offers. Right, you will already have been sent this information and it is just a reminder about the task that we'd like you to do over the summer. So to prepare for the tectonic processes and hazards units, we'd like you to keep a detailed record of tectonic hazards. That's earthquakes, volcanic eruptions and tsunamis that might happen over the summer break. You could keep this as a diary. Include the date, time, location and magnitude of the event, the impact of the event on the people, the environment and the economy. A good place to look for information is on the USGS website, the United States Geological Survey website. Newspapers um, and BBC News and Global News are good as well. So to prepare for the coastal processes unit, we would like you to research one coastal area. It might be one that you've visited in the past. Find some images or photographs that you've taken of the area, annotate them with how the area is being used. What are the natural landscapes like in the area? And is the area being managed or how is it being managed? So, Finally, hope to see you all in September and good luck with your examination results. Thank you.